minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man, only, only trap talk exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it, and not them hop from the hop to the club to spot. Get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up. tapped in to the coolest reptile podcast in the world i'm your boy mj what is good happy motherfucking thursday energy's there let's just say that man this is your first time tapping in uh welcome i'm your boy mj come out with uh at least three podcasts a week here on the trap talk with uh mj podcast channel so oops my bad calling alex uh do me a favor and hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell that we are on top of every single podcast um, I drop here on the YouTube channel and then drop a comment. Let me know how you're liking the shows. Your feedback matters, okay? Uh, shout out to all my re- re- recurring viewers, all my recurring subscribers. I uh, appreciate all the support. I see you guys. I see the early bird in the building. I'll get to you guys in just a second, but you guys know how we get things started here on this podcast for the freshest and bestest rodents delivered to your doorstep. That's going to be coldbuttercafe.com. Just got four heavy packages to my doorstep. You know, if you see that penguin, it's a good sign. Shout out to Steven. Shout out to Desiree over at Cold Butter Cafe. Check them out on Instagram and go to their website, Freshest and Bestest. You cannot beat Cold Butter Cafe. And then definitely go check out my boys, John and Alex, over at Sim Container. If you got eggs, put them inside of a Sim box. Less stress, less steps. If it's a Sim, it's a win. I'm going to patent that. I swear to God, that's such a sick saying, if I may say so myself. Uh, shout, uh, shout out to John and Alex. Go check them out on Instagram. They have an amazing monitor program as well. Uh, they are definitely my mentors when it comes to the monitor game. So check them out, man. Shout out to my boys. And then shout out to Steven and Ashley Flexing, Texas. All day, every day. Focus Cube Habitats. Um, PVC built enclosures. They've definitely got their own style when it comes to building these things. I think it's amazing. Um, literally a couple weeks away, if not less, uh, from finally getting my big order in from them. Been waiting, fuck, dude, five months, I think. And I cannot wait for it to actually go down. Um, so be ready for that. Definitely going to put a blog out on that. Uh, I just want to say go go follow Focus Cube Habitats on Instagram. Check out their website. Go get yourself a Focus Cube Habitat for sure. Uh, shout out to uh, Jesse and the entire Freedom Breeder crew. If you got a stainless steel Freedom Breeder rack, you already know what level you're at in this shit, the professional level. Awesome news. 11 to 130, I will be getting my Freedom Breeder racks. I am so excited. Five years in the making, man. I'll never forget. I think it was Miguel's place when I first saw like a legit stainless steel freedom breeder rack, like a new one. And I was like, oh my God, bro. And then he was like, yeah, it's like 10 G's. And I was like, whoa. And that was like four years ago. And I just thought, I, would, I don't know, how am I ever going to afford one? And here I am getting stainless steel freedom breeder racks, man. So all I got to say, 
Let the snakes do the do the pain when it comes to that shit, because that shit's not cheap. But thank you, Jesse. Thank you to the entire Freedom Breeder uh, family. Looking forward to getting those racks and uh, putting them into the trap. It's going to be awesome. Shout out to Miguel Garcia, always evolving pythons. Please go give my boy a follow right now on Instagram. Definitely my biggest inspiration in the ball python game. Um, just I think all, all, all together, man. He's definitely one of my best friends. Definitely one of my biggest motivators. Oh, my God. Definitely one of big, my biggest motivators. So uh, check him out on Instagram. He has amazing productions that he puts out on Morph Market. So make sure you check him out on Morph Market as well. And, yeah, man, I appreciate Miguel Garcia so much. I appreciate the entire AEP family. Thank you for all your ongoing support. And, yeah, you guys are real ones, man. Check them out. And check out my boy, Alan, over at Amazing Basins. If you're into boreal snakes like the boas, like the Amazon Basin, you're going to definitely want to tap in with my boy, Alan, on Instagram. Um, he's definitely fucking just somebody niche for this species. It's not easy to work with such an amazing species like this. Basically, the Ferrari of snakes, I like to call them. So if you want to learn more about these or if you want to actually – possibly own one of these that my man produces go check him out on instagram go join his patreon page let him know your boy mj sent you and yeah man, that's my boy right there doing big things looking forward to seeing what you do this year alan for reals man big things popping and then shout out to my boy blake stewart over at sd identity stewart design go to their website sdidentity.com if you're looking to promote yourself and and really invest in your brand and, and take it to the to the fullest level like like honestly max it out then you're going to want to go to Stuart design see what he has to do or excuse me we'll see what he has to say definitely doesn't just help anyone you got to come correct but i got to say right now this guy is helping the biggest people in the industry and he's still helping more people as we speak so shout out to blake stewart over at Stuart design check him out on instagram that's my boy and then shout out to the og triple og triple triple mark bailey over at mark bailey reptiles heavy hitter been heavy hitter in the game on all many on so many levels all in all, go check him out on Morph Market. He has a lot of his productions on Morph Market. Mark Bailey Reptiles. Appreciate your support, big bro. Hell yeah. And then, guys, shout out to my boy Rami over at the Reptile Super Show. Um, getting closer and closer to the Anaheim show, man. I'm super excited. So make sure you guys are ready. If, uh, you know, you don't have plans yet, make plans. July 10th, I believe. Oh, shit. I have the flyer right here. Holy shit. What do you know? July 9th, 10th. Okay. Anaheim Super Show. And guess what's July 7th? Trap Fest 2022. But we're going back to this right quick, okay? Reptile Super Show going down July 9th and 10th. Guys, let's mob to this. Let's do it. Sickest show on the West Coast. It's going to be amazing. Shout out to my boy Rami. And then, uh, yeah, I would love to meet you guys at the Reptile Super Show. And then I have to say, shout out to Bob Ashley and Brian Potter over at NARBC. Who, threw, who throws probably one of the most inspiring shows when it comes to meeting all your, you know, mentors and people you look up to on Instagram or just on the breeding side of things. Dude, NARB season is where it's at. So make sure you do what you got to do to make it to either one of these shows. Very crucial. You make it to one of either one of these shows, it's going to change your life. I can tell you that right now. One possible, one possible show that could change your life. I don't, I'm not going to say it's going to change your life because I haven't been to it yet. It's going to be my first year. Will you come with me? That's all I'm asking. Will you guys roll with me somewhere? Are you guys trying to like figure out where it is? Well, let me tell you something. Brian Potter, okay, and Bob Ashley collabed with the homie Brian Barchek to throw this event, okay? You know, I've been kind of talking about Animal Con, a little bit of concern, but I'm overall excited, okay? Because I am going to be tapping in with some homies, Barchek being one of them, Miguel Garcia being one of them, my boy Socrates and Snake Master Exotics in the building. And if you're fucking trying to figure out what I'm talking about, I am talking about Animal Con, guys. Do your boy a favor. If you can't, especially in the Florida area, this should be automatic. If you're in the Florida area, get your ass over to Animal Con website. Get yourself some tickets and let's go. I need homies to all pull up to this because uh, I feel I'm going to be, you know, out of place. So, you know, obviously Brian's my boy. I'm here to support him. Um, the good thing is Miguel Garcia is going to be in the building, which is going to be huge. So I need more hitters to come up, man. Why don't you guys roll with me, please? Any of you guys, if you can make it out, it's going to be August 26th to the 28th. Orlando, Florida. Okay. Roll out. It's going to be big things popping. Do what you got to do to make it to this show because it's going to be awesome. Especially, uh, you know, if I see you there, because we can link up and be like, yo, how do you, what do you think? And then we talk about it. And is it life changing? Find out with me. That's all I got to say. But thank you, uh, Brian Potter, Bob Ashley, Brian Barcheck for uh, throwing this event. This is going to be uh, no live animal sales, all for the creators. But let's see how this goes. I'm excited for it. Okay. Um, 
Shout out to Phil Goss over at US Art Guys. Let's all come together and let's fight for our animal rights. Go down to the link below, become a member for US Art. If you cannot become a member financially for whatever reason, that's fine. Let's talk about it, man. Put it on your stories. Tell everybody what it's about. I had collateral that I dropped off at uh, pet stores. Rami dropped off about over 100 of these, and I went to Pet Kingdom. I went to Vet Pets, uh, where I kind of randomly have to get my crickets and shit like that, and I dropped off a bunch of collateral for them to have at their registers and stuff like that. So, guys, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's go ahead and push this. Let's help you know, U.S. Art fight for animal rights, and then do me a favor and go to uh, U.S. Art's YouTube channel and subscribe to U.S. Art's YouTube because Gary Arto runs that, and that's the best way to kind of stay on top of current events, okay? So shout to you if you support U.S. Art, and then shout to U.S. Art. Uh, period man if you guys want to know what the hell i got going on other than podcast stuff if you want to know what projects i have cracking off if you want to know what snakes i have breeding and my passion projects all the above go to mj exotics cartel on instagram and go give your boy a follow very active on instagram i post a lot of my sales on there shit a lot of my super door for ticks that i have available a lot of my boas that i have available i typically post on my instagram before i even put them on morph market so I do give my Instagram followers first dibs um, after my Patreon members. First off, Patreon members get first dibs on anything. But other than that, go check me out on Instagram, MJ Exotics Cartel. And I got to say, shout out to my Twitch viewers. Twitch viewers going up. Um, and then if you guys would like to support this channel more than a subscription, more than a like, if you would want to help me out and help this channel out, um, any donations welcome. And you can send a donation to Exotics Cartel with an A, not an E on PayPal. Or you could simply send a super chat. If you have a question for my boy Kyle Vargas and you want to kind of get something out there and talk to him about it, uh, send a super chat. And more than likely, I will read it. No guarantee I read. I always read every single super chat. So, yeah, man, honestly, I, I appreciate all the love and support. Last but not least, man, shout out to my Patreon members. Yeah, you, my trappers. I love you guys. You guys are my heart. I appreciate all the support I get from my Patreon page. It's an ongoing community that's growing. Um, if you want to get more out of this industry, if you want to get more out of this podcast, if you want to get tapped in behind the scenes, best thing you could do for yourself is go down to the trap talk uh patreon link and join the patreon family as soon as you join the family you tap into the discord and that's when you see what all the trappers are going over 120 trappers in that discord all fucking just active you know different types of channels different types of species i mean almost every species of snakes you could think of that's relevant <laughs> no no sand boas i'm just kidding i think there is sand boas is there anyways come join the trap crew man come join the family i appreciate all my support Plain and simple. And what is good with the early birds? Who is here and who's ready for my boy Kyle Vargas, uh, who we're still waiting for? So we're going to go ahead and shout out the early birds. Who's here in the building right now? Sunshine State Sulfurs. What is good? Thank you for tapping in, player. High as balls. The homie Ryan, Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. Thanks for tapping in, player. The homie Josh, Scales, Fins, and Feathers. Big Dog, how are those Persinus eggs doing? My man's about to have some green tree monitor eggs. Go give him a follow on Instagram, scale fins and feathers. Trap talk family member all day, every day. The big homie, Mason Johnson. Please tell me you got your shirt and chocolates, bro. Damn, Mason. Respect. Shout out to my boy, Mason Johnson. Trap talk, Patreon family member all day, every day. Um, and then shout out to the homie, Deviant Glass. Trap talk, Patreon family member all day, every day. Hold on. Kyle's texting me. Let me make sure he's good. Um. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, what the big homie Mike in the building, 1776 Exotics. Big things popping with me and the homie Mike. I hope you guys are ready. Can't tell you what the what it is, but big uh, big collaboration with 1776 Exotics and Trap Talk. Big things. That's all I got to say. Do me a favor and go on Instagram and follow my boy Mike, 1776 Exotics. Mad love to you, bro. Thank you for all your support. J-Boys, Boas, what is good? Thank you for tapping in, player. Um, the homie Clutch, what is good? Thank you for tapping in. Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. The homegirl Chantel, what is good? Trap Talk family member all day, every day. We just had an amazing podcast Monday, uh, New Breeder on the Block series. Uh, what an amazing uh, episode, Chantel. I had a great time. Uh, thank you for tapping in. She's a day one for sure. Uh, the homie Matthew Summers, what is good? Matthew Summers, how's love life? <laughs> That's my boy right there, man. Shout out to my boy, Matthew. Thank you for tapping in. You're a real one, bro. Um, also, give him a follow on YouTube. Matt Summers, Reptiles, killing the game. And he also kills the game on the road. Here's my one, bro. Um, also, Ooh. give him a follow on Ooh, What is going on there? Okay. Sorry. Man. I'm all I'm all over the place today. Uh, and then shout out to K Totics. What is good? Thanks for tapping in. The homie Sean from Sound Serpents. What is good? Uh, isn't it eight? Bro, wait. What time is it in Texas? Isn't it? Isn't it eight in Texas? I'm so confused. 
I thought he was in Texas. Man, this is really um, all right. Little miss uh, communication because I could have sworn this fool Kyle or Kyle, yeah, Kyle was in Texas, and I could have sworn. And you guys are gonna be confused here with me. It's all good. This is real life shit. It's seven. It's Eastern. I, it's seven fifteen where I live. Oh damn! It's an hour. Damn, yo. I thought you was two hours. In Texas. I didn't know Texas. Oh, damn. That's heavy. Uh, all right. I guess we can just talk about current events. What the fuck? God damn it. All right. He's coming on in 10 minutes. Don't even trip. All right. Looks like we're going to chop it up about shit. But anyways, let me continue to follow. Uh, let me continue to shout out the uh, early birds in the comments. My boy, Sean, over at Sound Serpents who's actually working with some sick-ass bloods, just had children pythons clutch as well, doing big things. Go give him a follow on Instagram. He's also a Trap Talk Patreon fan member all day, every day. So thank you for your ongoing support. Um, let's see. The homie Trademan Exotics, what is good, player? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, appreciate your uh, – he's actually a Patreon member as well. So day one, appreciate you, dog. Private Sector Pythons, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, yep, let's see. Eric's More Factory, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Hell yeah, what is good? Uh, let's see. Royal Bama Reptiles, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, what is going on with that? And then let's see. We have the homie Gary from Out of Space Reptiles. What is good, player? Trap Talk family member all day, every day. Damn, dude, these are Austin Anderson in the building. What is good, Austin Anderson? Oh, what's up, Belmar Reptiles? What is good? Home growth at Tiger Mom in the building. Thanks for tapping in. Damn, the homie Patrick Holmes. Ooh, you know Patrick Holmes is in the building for a specific reason. Uh, no reason. Uh, no, no worries. Hold on. I'm texting Kyle. Uh, anyways, don't worry, it's coming. Uh, Patrick Holmes, my boy Patrick Holmes, definitely one of my biggest Condro uh, mentors out there for sure. Top three, hundred percent. Give my boy a follow. Uh, Arboreal Obsession on Instagram. That's his actual Instagram name. Thanks for tapping in, Patrick Holmes. Oh, what do you know? The big homie Rami in the building. That's right, Reptile Super Show, July 9th through the tenth, Anaheim Convention Center. And I will say, like I said, July 7th, for my Patreon members only and celebrity guest appearance, like, you know what I mean? Trap Fest 2022 going down July 7th. So obviously whoever goes to Trap Fest is going to the Reptile Super Show. So if you do fly in for that event, I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. Uh, shout out to my boy, Rami, for tapping in. And then the homie, Andrew. Andrew, what is good, player? Uh, Andrew Acevedo, definitely uh, one of the biggest hitters in the Super Dwarf game for sure. Give my boy a follow on Instagram. Herptofauna. Herptofauna, did I say that right, bro? Anyways, thanks for tapping in. Appreciate you, homie. DCI Exotics, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, let's see. Jason Earl, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. The homie Julio Fulio, what is good? Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. The homie Dom from 702 Serpents, Vegas in the building, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. And then the homie Bax Balls and such. What is good? All right, damn, that's all you guys. Looks like I need to fucking come up with something. Well, looks like I came up with something. I'm going to tell you something real quick, okay? Uh, biggest reason why I'm excited about tonight's guest, okay? And I'm not just hyping this up. Um, it's been very hard for me to want to bring a venomous guest on, okay? First off, um, not that it's hard to find any respectable venomous keepers out there. I just, A, don't follow too many venomous people out there just because I keep things relevant. You know, I like to follow things that matter to my projects. You know, don't get me wrong. I like looking at venomous stuff. I just don't follow a lot of venomous keepers. So I'm not on top of it. So that being said, my boy, Andrew, who's in the building right now, Andrew Acevedo and the homie Stephen Cush. Um, I think it was Tinley or I forget what show, maybe Arlington, where they kept mentioning about, because those two, let me just say, Andrew and Stephen recently got in, not recently, but they're heavy, uh, <laughs> Let me take that back. They both admire uh, Venomous, okay? And they admire they admire Venomous Keepers. So they talked about this Kyle uh, Vargas character. And I was like, well, let me just see what he has. And I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Um, crazy thing is, a lot of the stuff that he has on his Instagram account seems like majority of it is from herping and, and stuff out there. But a lot of it is stuff that he breeds himself, okay? So I am very excited to see where this goes um, as far as his... Uh, you know, is is uh, I, don't know, I guess his passion behind his projects. I want to know. I mean, because you understand, like, for someone to breed venomous, like, why do you breed venomous? Like, that's my first thing. Like, who the fuck? Like, like, imagine the customer base for venomous in the vet. And I'm I'm sorry if I'm being like judgmental, but I can only imagine the venomous community being 
pretty fucking weird. You know what I'm saying? I hear stories about like just people who buy like beaded lizards and shit and they're weird. So I, I don't think he, I don't think he breeds for the money. First off is my assumption. And this is just me kind of pre like thinking what this is going to go down. I have like, I don't know Kyle that well, you know, I only know him through the homies and I do respect him from what I see. But uh, for the most part, it's cool to bring somebody on uh, who's definitely going to have some knowledge to drop that relates to the venomous because I don't bring enough venomous people on, but that, there's a reason behind that. Um, so you should be here in a couple more minutes. Uh, if you guys have any, I don't normally do this. Okay. But if you guys want to ask me anything, if you're like, Hey, uh, MJ, since it's just you, I got a question for you. Um, go ahead and drop it. This is your, your time. We're, we're killing time right now. So we're gonna make this shit happen. Oh, DCI exotics. Okay. How them new Willie's doing? Is that a perverted? Qu I'm just kidding. Dude, the Miss Willie lines. Holy shit. Who would have thought I would have inquired such an amazing group from Rico Wilder, like the, the man himself. Um, you know, you gotta understand, like me and rest in peace forest, right? But I knew what these snakes were well before Forrest passed away. Like I knew what these snakes meant to him. But overall, the way Forrest would talk about the Miss Willie line, um, and anyone who knew Forrest and talked to Forrest about the Northern Emerald Tree Bow, especially the Miss Willie line, um, he, it was one of his favorite things to talk about. The guy would just go on forever talking about it. So basically, I have what I feel like, and Desiree agrees with me too, one of, if not many, of Forrest's favorite animals in my collection. Which, if you would have asked me if that was going to go down like two, three years ago, I would have been like, what? Right? First off, you don't even know how expensive these fucking things are. But for them just to give them, like, you know, not just give them, but to trust me and put the put that legacy of a project in my, in this room. They're in this room. Look at that one. Look at that two. Look at that three. You got the Ryan Wilson one right there. So to answer your question, fucking stoked. Um, I mean, Miss Willie Lines are doing great. Uh, I just got what her name is you know her name is alba but i put the jessica in front of the alba so now her name is jessica alba so jessica alba is looking very prime very plump um doing her thing not bothering her at all uh so I, i'll probably give her like a week or whatever to offer her a meal if i want I'm not rushing it i mean see how it goes i mean she has hella size on her she's a big girl you know what i mean age is there so nah, i mean not a rush you know what i mean it's if it's one thing about a that I'm learning about these emeralds is um, you can't, it's really hard to see it when they're stressed sometimes, uh, but you also don't want to like push it there. You know, it's kind of just kind of trust the process. Like you have to trust the process with the emeralds or you're going to eat yourself up and go down a very, very down route. Um, what was that animal con thing kind of myth? All right. You want to talk about animal con? Okay. Here's the thing with animal con. Okay. Animal con is like I said, Brian, Brian Potter and Bob Ashley, who throw NARBC, one of the sickest shows in the world, period. The Super Bowl shows, right? They're, collabor they're collaborating with Brian Barcheck because Brian wants to throw a show or is throwing the show Animal Con in Florida, which is mainly for all the creators. So, like, think about your biggest YouTube creators, your biggest YouTube or Instagram influencers, TikTok influencers. You know, it's mainly a big hub for all the most poppinous uh, plat social media platform, animal worker related people to go to for people to meet and link up with. Uh, but there's gonna be cool events going on. I mean, I don't know full fully like how that shit's gonna go down. I'm, I'm pretty curious. Either way, um, I'm on, you know, Brian Watt invited me as a guest. I'm honored to be on that website and to be on that list. I think it's great. So I'm looking forward to it. That's what's going down. Um, and like I said, man, I, I feel good because see, I'm tapping in with some hitters, bro. I got Socrates with me, uh, the homie Matthew Summers. We got Snake Master Exotics, who's going to be in the building too. So I'm, you know, we got Miguel if he, if he goes. <laughs> Just kidding. Just saying, Miguel. I don't fucking, you know, we haven't really talked about it yet, but uh, who knows? But uh, anyways, um, listen. At the end of the day, I only know as much as what I'm telling you about Animal Con. So if you're in a driving distance, if you for whatever reason like fly like to animal con in orlando please do it and let's link up well the best time ever Dude, link up with your boy we'll have some fun and then we'll take it from there man uh let's take one more question before we tap in with our guest because he's just coming in right now uh oh just join patreon respect promising project Ooh, that's some patreon talk right there i can't tell you that but thank you so much because now we are going to get cracking on this episode 
because uh, like I said, man, looking forward to having a Venomous Keeper on the show. It's been a minute. Uh, this guy, oh, man, Venomous is his fucking cup of tea. Let's just say that. And highly respected for my two homies, Andrew and Steven. After tapping in with his shit and seeing his work, I'm hella respected on this guy's work. So here he is. Without further ado, Kyle Vargas, the Club King. What is good, Kyle Vargas? How you doing, brother? Chill. Hey, dude, my bad on the time, bro. That's, I feel bad. That was my fault. Hey, it Wait, is so what it you, is. You're only an hour difference from San Diego, from West Coast? I guess so, man. Yeah, 725 right now. So, Where are you at in Texas? El Paso, right on the tip. Wow. Okay. So I didn't, I, you know, I figured any, anytime I think Texas, I always feel like it's two hours ahead. Cause right. But whatever. We're the, I mean, we're the exception out here, yeah. but it's all good. Yeah. Bro. How you living, bro? How, thank you so much for being here first and foremost. I know you had some, you had some family thing that you just got done with and I appreciate you being here, but how's everything on your, Hey, do me a fight favor, Kyle. Can you turn your phone sideways for me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Tight. Cool. So anyways. So that, I, yeah. You're good. Yep. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. So, anyways, how's everything on your end, bro? How you living? Kind of tell us how a little update on what's going on with you, bro. Oh, uh, everything's good, man. Um, I got a lot of uh, family stuff going on, like uh, like you said. Um, you know, keeping busy. I've also had a lot of people in and out of town. Uh, you know, showing them, you know, the the ropes out here. Uh, showing them the collection um taking them out and kind of just showing them what the what the kind of field life is about you you know how what it's what it's like to to start in the beginning with these things you know and, and to, to kind of get more in depth with what you're talking about uh i mean a lot of the stuff you do now were you born and raised around it like were you born and raised where you're at like is this like a part of your, your life since a kid or so i was born and raised here in el paso texas um i was never there's nobody in my family that was interested in reptiles or anything like that um it just kind of started as a you know me as a little kid going outside and, and chasing after lizards and just kind of spending time in the desert with my pup man and um it just evolved into into this now and and you know there's so many different routes you can take with the reptiles man i mean what, what is it with the venomous like what was it that made you just be like fuck this is it I guess it was uh, it was the first time that I ever found a, a rock rattlesnake is what really did it for me. I mean, um, it was just the biggest the the biggest rush that I that I've ever had, man. You know, when I when I found my first one, uh, it changed it changed me. It it was over from that point on, man. That was what I was doing. And, and how old were you then? I was fifteen when I found my first one. Damn. Okay. And, that and was so uh, two thousand and five. Okay, 05. All right, so 2005. Damn, all right. I, I graduated high school in 03, so I'm like five years older than you. Um, yep. Okay, so let's just take things back here. You know, 15 years old, you find this rock rattlesnake, right? Did I say that right? Rock rattlesnake? Yep. Um, it, were you like, was herping a part of your thing? Like, is that what you did as a kid back in the day? Like, were you just like do, doing typical stuff, or how'd you find this rattlesnake? No, so uh, when I was a kid, I kind of, like I said, I kind of grew up chasing lizards and interested in going to the pet shop to look at your uh, bearded dragons and leopard geckos uh my father actually bought me a um water dragon and i had her for about nine years or so but um you know i just had kind of a passing interest in in reptiles and as a whole and then uh when i was 15 um me and my buddy needed a reason to go ahead and uh, ditch uh a class <laughs> and uh we decided that we were going to go hiking and so we went out, you know, we went out hiking and, um, I reached up and, uh, felt, you know, this, this soft squishy thing up top, up above me. And I went around and looked at it and it was a fucking rock rattlesnake. And I don't know if we can cuss on here, but, uh, yeah, bro, are you yeah. Kidding me? please. All right. Uh, all right, cool. So, uh, yeah, it was a rock rattlesnake, man. And, um, I just, that, that like feeling that when I, when I like, when I first laid eyes on it, and, and, and I, di I didn't even have an idea what it was at first. I mean, I had no idea what I was looking at. That's how little I knew about reptiles. Um, you, 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 know, you didn't know it was venomous. Like you, you, didn't, you didn't know what it was. I knew it was venomous because it was rattling. Uh, and I had watched like Steve Irwin uh, and shit, you know, Mar Marco Shea. I, I knew it was a rattlesnake. But to be honest, I thought maybe I had discovered like a new species or something because 
I, I literally, I, I knew nothing. I knew absolutely nothing about uh, Venomous or, or anything. I knew Western Diamondback. Um, so long story short, I eventually found out what it was. And um, I just, I don't know, man, I fell in love, dude. I fell in love with them. And uh, I've just kind of based everything, everything in my collection uh, around them now. And, and obviously, you know, obviously that's my, that's the face kind of. So 15 years old, you see this rock rattlesnake, and then what was the next move? Like you, you just started collecting ra- uh, venomous, or like, like, wh- like what happened after that moment? Yeah. So during the the course of like the first five years, I would say um, I got pretty interested in venomous in general, uh, and you know I wanted to keep everything, man. I wanted to have a gaboon viper and a puff adder and a cobra. And, you know, just a little bit of everything. And um, I did. I, I tried a little bit of everything. Um, I was successful with some. I was unsuccessful with others. Um, and, you know, to their detriment, unfortunately. But um, I just kind of, over over that course of time, I kind of realized what it was that I really liked and what I wanted to, to work with. And um, that's, that's Montana Rattlesnakes, man. And that's just kind of been my lane for... You know, the last, like I said, I guess 12, 12 to 15 years strong. Fuck, bro, that's so sick. And, you know, for you to be so young still, too, like, I mean, you've, this has basically been a big, part of your, a big part of your life, more than half your life, you know what I mean? Yeah, luckily I have my, you know, my mom was, um, she allowed me to do it, man. She allowed me to bring, you know, snakes into into the house and and keep them despite how, how scared she was and how it made her feel. She allowed me to do it, man. So I, I got to thank her for that, you know, cause that kind of started the, the foundation for where I'm at. How, how soon did breeding cross your mind? Like, like what age were you like thinking about, all right, I want to start breeding these. So that was a, uh, it's funny that that was in, um, 2008, man. I, I have a, a tattoo actually of this snake on my hand and, That's um, hard. Yeah, wow. she's she that that day, man, June uh June second, two thousand and eight, dude was uh the day that I realized I'm gonna breed these things because she was just so different. You know, at that time I think I had seen maybe uh a, a couple hundred rock rattlesnakes from different areas, different mountain ranges, and uh I found this thing, man, and, and um I knew right away that she was different, that 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 there was something special about her. And, you know, now it's been, you know, like I said, since 08. So um, I, I and now I've, you know, had several generations of babies out of her and, and kind of proved that out, man, that she was special. So, yeah, you know, it's it, one, one story you don't hear a lot, Kyle, and this is what makes your story so genuine, is that um, a lot of people who get into breeding, period, there's a money motive behind it. Like you're doing it because you're trying to fucking figure out how to make bills. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't seem like money was really the motive behind you wanting to breed am i right or am i wrong like oh he dipped out there he goes he's back <laughs> can you, you break me? it up there brother can you hear me yeah i can hear you all right do i sound better you, uh, you, are you can hear me for sure you sound way better yeah okay cool and for whatever reason kyle if it gets bad just exit out and come right back in click the link from the front if, if it gets bad again but anyway so what i was saying kyle is that like uh, you know from from what i can see uh, you know, that that's not happening as much anymore as people who get into breeding isn't just getting in for the breeding part. A lot of it has to do with money. You know what I mean? Like it's about like what money they can make off of it. It doesn't seem like that was really your your motive in the beginning. Am I right or wrong? Like, well, what, what, what was your purpose of breeding? No, you're definitely right. Um, to be honest with you, uh, when I first started breeding. Hey, I'm, um, hey, I'm going to get a lighter. I can hear you. Keep talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I first started breeding uh, these snakes, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to breed them and, and, and what to do, um, I had a lot of friends that also kept different species of snakes. Uh, they would ask me, you know, why I was wa- kind of wasting my time and efforts uh, on this, on these particular species that are, you know, ca- sometimes can be harder to breed. Um, and it was only because I liked them. It was only because I liked them so much that I didn't care if they were going to make me money or if they weren't, you know, um, it was just that I liked what they had uh, to offer me, you know, it's like, it, it, like just, just seeing them did enough, did enough for you. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, 
it's it's kind of it's a like I said, it's a weird passion you don't see in people who are coming new into this nowadays because now it's all about the influence and basically the money. And it's not a bad thing. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm, I'm, that's what got me into it. I wanted to make money. I'm not going to lie. I mean, not, well, orig- not originally, but I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm motivated by the money part for sure. Right. And I just think that there's a lot of different ways that people come into this hobby. You know, sometimes sometimes you have people uh, that, that come into the hobby. They met somebody who was a, um, a collector. You know, they collected wild reptiles and they sold them to, like, wholesalers and they sold them to pet shops. There's people that come in that way. There's people who come in and the first person they meet is like, uh, you know, some, some big, um, like, I don't know, somebody who owns a giant reptile facility that is well known, you know, and, and they, and, and so they have a, then, then those people have a different look on uh, outlook on the, the hobby as a whole. And, you know, they take a different Avenue. So everybody starts at a different place in, in the game, you know? Now, I mean, you got to admit, bro, you're working with some shit that you can't really make mistakes on. I mean, you can, but like, fuck, like it's like, and, and you know, I'm sure with you working with these for so many years, there's had to been time, there's had to been room for mistakes here and there, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I've been bitten, I guess, if that's what you're shooting towards. So, yeah, it ha- it happens, man. Um, I guess it doesn't. Bite? What's up? When was your first venomous snake bite? So it's it's real funny, man, because the very first one I ever caught got me. What you caught? Oh wow! Tell me, I want to hear the story, please. So, so um, you know, I was I was a fifteen year old kid, man, and I just really wanted to see this snake uh, eat a lizard. For I can't even tell you why, but I just I needed it to happen, and so I put a lizard in with it, and it wouldn't eat it. So. I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos, uh, you know, on, on feeding snakes that wouldn't eat and stuff. And so I pinned this snake, man, the first one I ever had found. I pinned it and was like trying to stuff a, a lizard down its throat. And it, it, it reared one of its fangs down and got me right in the thumb. For, so luckily it was just like a bee sting. It, w- it was very, very mild. It didn't it, uh, put a lot of venom in me at all. So... I got, I lucked out on the first one. Damn, bro. That is wild. I mean, 15, like, I mean, I don't know. I just, what are you going to do? You're so young, you know? But I mean, so, okay. But I got to ask you, I mean, like after that moment, right? I mean, obviously you get bit. Did you go tell your mom right away? Like, did you freak out? What, like, what did you do? Uh, what, what was no. your initial reaction? No, I didn't want to tell my mom because uh, she'll probably make me get rid of all my, the stuff I had. Damn. And that that just wasn't an option at the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, I just like I said, luckily it wasn't bad. It it, it was very mild. Um, it it felt kind of like a a bad bee sting, kind of N- nothing more than that. Right. I mean, and then obviously, you know, and I've heard about this that it's it's really a coin flip when you get bit by a, by by a rattlesnake, right? Because it, it, they they don't determine. Or they can't really control how much venom they put out, right? Like it's kind of like depends on the bite, or how's that really work from what you know? So yeah, uh, it just depends on what kind of bite. They, they, if they give you a feeding response bite, um, you know, if they're upset and, and they want to give you, you know, that kind of bite. If they just want to give you a warning bite, you know, it just depends, man. Uh, um, of course, babies don't have the ability to control it as as well as older animals do, um, but. And, and and aside from that, everybody reacts to venom differently. You know, uh, everybody's body is just a little bit different. So what 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 bites me and affects me real negatively may not be the same for others. And that's been that's been the case in several instances with with even some of my friends. Okay, um, and, and then so fifteen, your first bite, and then you know how, how soon did the next one follow? I mean, did did, did you go a little bit at least, or or did you, did you not really learn your lesson? <laughs> Yeah, no, I still haven't learned my lesson. Um, my last bite was about nine months ago. Um, uh, it was it was number fourteen. So wait, oh shit! I was asking, I was just talking about like the the, the second bite. So yeah, but so it's after I was getting to. It's been uh, it's I guess it's been a, a, about once a year, almost. It averaged out to. Some of them have been, you know, in a in a 
pretty rapid time span. I guess number six and seven were about like three months apart. Bro, 14 venomous bites. I can't wrap my mind around this. This is crazy. So the, the nine months ago, what was this scenario? Were you herping again or was this at your pad? How did this happen? They've they've all been at my house for, uh, with the exception of one that happened at a friend's house. Um, and it was just the, the very last one was just a crazy accident, man. Um, something that I've never seen a snake do and and that I don't ever foresee a snake doing ever again. It, it was just one of those instances that you never could have seen coming. And, you and, know? and that's the kind of thing that happens with any animal. Like you, you can't, anything is predictable, is unpredictable to bite you. I don't care what it is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's been, you know, I will say that several of the times that I've been bitten, I almost saw it coming, if that makes sense, you know? Like, I've, I've taken a, an unnecessary risk, and, and, and in my mind, I've, I've, you know, I've assumed that risk. I've, I've said, all right, man, this thing's, this water bowl is a little too close, but I'm going to try it, you know, and I'll try it, and I'll get bit. And it's like, oh, well, you saw that coming. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... Yeah. I mean, let's, let's, I mean, what, what, so do you feel like your body is just kind of like built to take these bites more than a typical other person? And that's what it is. Dude, I, you know, there was a time where I thought that maybe, uh, I was building up some kind of, I guess you would call it immunity or something towards venom. Uh, but dude, no, man. I mean, number seven was my worst bite of all. Uh, what, number six. What, what happened? Seven. You don't mind. I want to know what happened. Seven. Let's let's, let's talk about the worst bite. Um, it, it was uh, it was. I thought I was gonna die, man. My my vision just went completely out. Uh, I couldn't move my body at all. Um, I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I couldn't see. Uh, I couldn't talk. I, and I just like in my mind, I thought I was, I was a goner. Um, it was a wild. What snake? What snake got you? There was actually a twin spot rattlesnake. A twin spot rattlesnake. And my my second bite was a twin spot rattlesnake, and it actually stopped my heart. What the fuck, bro? And and, and okay, I'm sorry. You this is the one at your house or your buddy's house? This happened at your house, right? These are these ones are at my house. Yeah, number six happened at a buddy's house. Oh my God! Okay, so he, is this the story you kind of told me and the homies at the uh, show where, like, you were on your way to the car and you blacked out at the car, or, or was that a different scenario? Or like you showed that's, up? That's the Marulis bite where I, I was actually driving, trying to drive home. Yeah, that's number six, man. That one I told you about. That was I was trying to drive home. Uh, it was a three and a half hour drive, and I couldn't make it. I, I was I was I remember like not being able to see the the lines in the road anymore, and I just had to pull over. That was that one. Yeah, I told you guys about that. It's crazy that you remember. Dude, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a hundred right now, Kyle. The reason why I don't have a lot of venomous keepers um, on this show is, for the most part, what you're talking about. A lot of these keepers that have stories like yours have a YouTube channel and, and they show themselves handling snakes and and I just feel like that's so bad. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's terrible. Yeah, because as much as you're talking about this, I feel like you're not really proud of it. Like I don't feel like no. Like this isn't something you're gloating about, and and, and, no. and you don't share it. It's not like you post things on the internet. But I'm 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 just this is why I wanted to bring you on because I mean this is something that you're willing to risk yourself over the love of having to be around the animals. Am I right? Yeah, man. And as far as you know, um, get, you know, talking about getting a bit, it's just something that you know. Yeah, of course I'm not proud of it. I definitely don't go around and tell people, hey, man, I've been bitten, you know, by X and X and X species. Um, I've never posted anything about it uh, because I'm not proud of it and because I don't want people to associate uh, venomous keepers, you know, with with that kind of image, you know, handling venomous snakes, getting bitten by, by venomous snakes, thinking that it's cool to handle, you know, venomous snakes because it's, it's really not, man. Uh, and never have I ever been bitten handling a venomous snake. It's always, you know, doing something that I shouldn't have been doing, you know, getting too close, uh, not using tweezers when I should have, not using a glove when I should have, um, oh, underestimating the strike range, you know, of an animal. 
it's all been, you know, things that could have been avoided, um, you know, but, but shit happens, dude. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, do me a favor. Exit out and come back in. There's like a little bit of a lag, but it should fix it when you come back in. Dude, my heart, man. I'm just like, fuck. Like, I was trying to build it up. Like, I want to know what was number two like? And he went straight to the most recent bite nine months ago. I think I met him. When did I meet him? Seven months ago? So I met him fresh off that bite. Whew. That's crazy. And I'm, I'm going to be really 110% with you right now. If this fool had a YouTube channel, I, he would not be on this show right now, 110%. Because he's for sure not dropping this. I mean, he's not dropping these stories to fucking brag about how, you know, how sick this is. He knows it's not sick. He's, he just, wow. Uh, if you're just tapping in with some 52 viewers, that's what I'm talking about, man. Let's get the likes up for my boy Kyle, um, and he's tapping in right now. So here he is. Kyle, you good? Yeah, yeah, you can. Is that a little bit better? Yep, you're good. You're clear, bro. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you know, and that's the thing, man, because I, I, I know – listen, Kyle, I had a I had a, um, a speckled rattlesnake. I, I basically rescued it because my buddy at the time – we're still my boy, but he, he had this thing in a Coca-Cola bottle, and he's like – Oh, I can't have this, man. My 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 wife's threatening to, or my ex-wife is threatening to take take me to court or some shit. So he just takes it to my house, and this thing's so tiny, bro, right? And basically, this thing doesn't eat for thirty days. I get it to eat, and then it becomes this full-grown. I mean, I don't want to say high white, but dude, it was fucking beautiful. I can send you pictures afterwards. But dude, this thing was so amazing, and the fact that I raised it, I felt like I knew it. So what do you think I was doing? I was fucking handling the living shit out of it, bro. Like I, I, like I mean, if if that snake had an attitude, I'm like, I'm not fucking with it. I just knew how and when to fuck with it. But I also got too comfortable, and I just, bro, like I didn't trust myself. Like I knew there was a time. The way I was handling that, that thing, I already knew there was a time and place where it was about to go down. So I, I had to fucking, I had to give it to my homie Miguel. Well, what what I'll say, you know. To stuff like that is that I think I think everyone, whether they want to admit it or not, has at one point in time handled a venomous snake in a in a way that they shouldn't have, you know, free handled it or it, it's a fascination. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. I myself uh, at times have mishandled, you know, especially baby rattlesnakes right when they're born, you know, put them in the palm of your hand. It's sometimes you can't help it. Is it stupid? Yes. Um, should you post it online for others to see and for, you know, other herpers, other new keepers into the hobby? Should you post it for those people to see? Absolutely not, man. It has no place online for others. Okay. And, and honestly, bro, this is why I feel like the people who introduced me to you respect you for a reason. Because, I mean, no offense, but fucking Luis and Stephen Cush are snobs, bro. They don't just like anyone, bro. They, they, they only purposely fuck with the best. And I'm telling you, what show was it? Was it Arlington when we all hooked up? Like when, when we linked yeah. up? So like the whole time was like, yo, we got to meet up with Kyle. And I was like, who's this Kyle guy, bro? You keep talking about this Kyle guy. And then when we met up, like, because first off, you know, Steven doesn't smoke like we like we smoke. Andrew, right. Andrew, Andrew does. But it was so sick to meet you and to find out how legit of a dabber you were. And I'm like, damn, this fool. Hell yeah. Instantly, I was like, this fool's sick as fuck. And then, yep. and then right there, I'll never forget the moment where – where, like I just smoked some of your your uh, your concentrate. I was like, damn, this feels sick. And then I pulled up your page, and that's when I was like, what the fuck? This fool is like, yeah. no, this is nuts. That I've never seen rattlesnakes like this. And I don't know if they're all rattlesnakes. We'll go through some of them, but like this right here is this is this herping? Is this on a herping trip or is this? Do you own this? Like, which one is this? That's a baby that I produced here uh, oh, at my place. You made this? Yeah. What's the speed? I mean, I can see it. Homer Pimpson? <laughs> no, that's the name. <laughs> yeah, man. I always put. I always like to put some crazy shit in the captions just to kind of throw people off, you know. Uh, I, I just like to have fun with it, man, and, and use it, you know, just just for that reason. Uh, sometimes I'll get a little crazy and put some artsy uh, or some informational stuff. But um, anyways, yeah, dude, that's a baby that I produced out of two animals here um, from a, from a special place. To, to me, I ran, I ran Texas. Um, wow. Yeah, wow. man, he's, he's a smoke show dude, yeah. And how many, how many uh, were in his litter? Because they're, they're live litters, no eggs. So they, these are live yeah. litters. Yeah, she had six of them. Six of them. And this was the most flossing one out of all of them, you would say? 
Yeah, I think there's another photo down on the page uh, of of the dad with all the babies out um, somewhere. But I mean, there's a yeah, there's some goodies, man. That's so, one of his brothers there. Which one? This one right here. The one on the right. Yeah. Oh my god! It's the same clutch or same yeah. skin litter. Damn, yeah. bro. Now, yeah. I, Let's, let's kind of talk about establishing something like this. You know, are, are these pretty easy or are they kind of like, like a fucking, you know, hard or like what's, what, what's it really like establishing a litter of rattlesnakes? So they're, the babies are, they feed pretty readily on, on baby mice, um, this locality in particular. Uh, but if they don't, then they pretty, pretty readily accept lizards um, as an alternative, which is their primary food source anyway. So, um, either pinkies or lizards, and I never have a problem getting them to to eat at all. Now you know it's it's. I try not to ask this question almost a lot of my guests because a lot of the guests bring typical shit like ball pythons and stuff like that. Um, so you know, for instance, ball pythons for the most part, if you know what you're doing, it's not hard to establish a ball python. It's pretty fucking straightforward. Not too many people I get to talk to you about establishing rattlesnakes. Um, so what was it like? trial and air wise learning how to feed rattlesnakes was it pretty straightforward uh did it take you a couple years like how did you get that down yeah so it actually took um several years and uh, just up until really three to five years ago have i really perfected it um but there's there, there's different tricks than just what you offer the the snakes to eat um, that right. makes them eat you know so some of the some of what helps get my snakes to eat is the stimuli that I provide in the cage, you know. Um, all, all my animals are kept natural. And so if I take babies born from a natural, you know, kind of on leaf litter and stuff like that, and I put them into a cage with newspaper or paper towel, they generally have a pretty tough time eating. Uh, but, but if I put them in a cage with something similar to what they were born on, uh, they, I, I feel like they feel some kind of sim similarity and, and they're more comfortable and they eat. Okay. So, so basically you don't, you, you try not to switch anything up from the point they're born. You just try to keep, no. you try to keep the same, even the same environment or like, or I mean, yeah. like, you do pull them right away or do you separate them or, or you just leave them? I leave them with mom for about a month, month and a half. Dude, no way. And, and okay, here we, I got some pictures of some, uh, um, some of the parents, I guess, around them. But let's kind of talk about that because that is so neat. So let's check this one out real quick. Um, is this the litter? Is this the litter we were talking about earlier? Is this is this the uh, or is this a different one? That's my girl, man. My the one that's tattooed on my hand. That's her with uh, her latest litter of babies. So okay, here we are with a litter of babies around the mom, and you you keep you keep it like this for a month and a half. So when do you offer them food? So I what I do is is I. I kind of offer the mother food um, while the babies are still in shed. Um, and that kind of, that kind of, uh, you know, the, the babies use kind of a scent recognition um, with the mother while she's eating. Um, they kind of, I guess, I don't know, it kind of sounds weird, man, but in a way they kind of learn from her, you know, what to eat kind of. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, man. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I've just done it so many times, you know, and, and tested it on so many animals and litters. And because, uh, I mean, I've produced hundreds of litters now over the course of the last decade. And, right. um, it, you know, it really does. It really does help, man. Leaving them with the mom and, and giving them that kind of head start with her. And now I'm sure you've seen some sort of activity like this in the wild, I'm assuming. Like, was this something you picked up on your herb trips or, or what, what made you even think of this? I, I, I haven't seen it in the wild, but um, I guess nothing made me think of it except for I couldn't – I was having a hard time getting babies eating and, and you know, getting, getting good results with uh, just kind of the ver veracity of the babies, you know. So um, – I just started experimenting different ways, different things, you know, pulling the babies, leaving them with mom, offering them pinkies, live, frozen, fresh killed, you know, different lizard species, and just kind of playing with different things over the course, you know, of time and just just perfecting, you know, what really works with each species 
and, and each locality because they are all different. I, I have to share this because I was looking forward to sharing something with you because you hell influenced me after our first session together, right? Because I was like, bro, look at this fool's rig. It's so clean. I could see right through it all. And I, you know, God bless. I was trying to offer you a dab. And you're like, bro, I'm straight, you know, like, but bro. <laughs> So I, I got this new rig, but I forgot to clean it. It's not that dirty, but look, I got a new rig for it. Like this is this was motivated by you right here. So I got a All right. nice little fresh rig. I was oh, gonna, I'm proud of that, man. I, I was gonna clean it. I swear to God, I fucking forgot. It was a crazy day, but anyways. Um, I feel it. I feel it. Back to back to the breeding topic here, bro. Um, so you know, you, you want to say about a hundred litters under your belt as far as what you produce, give or take, right? Um, oh, definitely way more than that. But uh, uh, Right. So Triple I mean, that. now and if we could kind of go back to when you were first getting your feet wet, 2008, right? I mean, did you like wave into it? Like, were you like blasting out litters or did you like slowly progress into where you're at today? Yeah, definitely slowly progressed. Uh, my very first time I actually ever produced uh, rock rattlesnakes was in 2012. And that was out of this female uh, here, my Franklin female. And um, then it just kind of from that year on steadily got better and better and better. And um, last year, man, was just absolutely crazy for me. Uh, I believe I had like 33. Um, prior to that, I had only ever had like 19. So it was it was wild. I, uh, it was I had a lot of baby rattlesnakes. Now, I mean, I, I, I mean. I'm curious, bro. Like, what are you doing with all these babies? Like, do you have like a, uh, I mean, obviously you're selling some of them, right? Or, you're, or all of them? What's going on with the babies? I'm curious. Yeah, I do. I do sell some of the babies. Um, definitely to collectors who I, who I know and trust will take care of the babies in a similar fashion um, th that I, th that I take care of my stuff. Right. Um, I also have a couple of very close friends. Um one that lives here in the same city as I do, and another one uh, that lives in, in Texas as well. But um, I give them a lot of uh, babies that I produce. Um, they both have the same interest that I do. Uh, they both keep their snakes uh, very similar to what I do, and they want to, you know, they, they want to be in this for the long run, and that's what I want, man. So they get a lot of my stuff, probably um, – 50%. You're keeping shit in house. Yeah, man, I, I definitely do. Like you said, um, your homies too, man, they've gotten some stuff from me now too. Um, and uh, I do talk to them quite often. Um, I answer a lot of their questions. You know, I'm eager to, to help. I want to see some new people get into, especially this genre of snakes. Um, and kind of, you know, just kind of see if we can gain some more traction, some more interest with this stuff, man. It, it is unfortunate, but it's also my choice because I know it's the right choice. But bro, I'd be third wheeling it sometimes in our group chat. It would be me, Steven, and Andrew. And they'd just be going back and forth with their venomous, and I'm just over here just fucking like not I'm not, not on their level. But respect. Bro. I'm telling you, man, you're obviously a huge inspiration to them. I could see it. Um, but I, I, you know, like I said, I don't know too many motherfuckers tapped into the Montane game, uh, which I still want to know more about as far as. Um, why you know so for the most part with these venomous it's always been venomous you never dabbled with anything else or you never had any other projects going on oh yeah man um i de like i said i had a little bit of everything um for a long time and i also had a giant colubrid collection at one point in time i had probably the largest collection of um definitely waco alterna at one time i had almost every locality of alterna you can think of uh, I had, you know, no block eye pyros, Anata. I just had a ton, man, a ton of. I was pumping out a ton of stuff, but I just wasn't, you know, interested in it. Um, and I went out and I found it all, you know, in the wild and and learned about it as much as I could. And none of it just really grabbed me like the the, the Montane Vipers, man. Yeah. And, and obviously, those these Montane Vipers, they're, they're in Mexico, in the mountains of Mexico, am I right? Or where, where are these Vipers found at? Yeah, so I, I, I keep some species from Mexico. Um, Silas, Amabilis, Price Eye. Uh, I have some Clavari, for you know, from Mexico. Not from Mexico, but they're descendants of animals from Mexico. Right. Um, oh, there go all my lights. Uh, and, you know, 
I'll get them back on. But I um, <clears throat> I also keep a lot of species or a lot of snakes from the United States as well. Uh, a lot of Texas lepidus, um, a lot of New Mexico clobberi. Um, I keep some European vipers. I do keep a lot of dwarf adders from South Africa as well. Um, but most of my stuff is, is clobs. And then as far as your projects, I mean, how are these laid out on a yearly basis? I mean, do you do, do you do repeat stuff every year? Do you just pick what do you want to do each year? How, how are your projects being, being laid out? So, um, well, that's a good question, man. I've never, I've never been asked that one. Um, I don't, I don't really have a way that I, that I do it. I guess I kind of just. When breeding season comes, I kind of have in my mind, you know, who I've already bred to who, um, what, what some of the offspring has looked like from from this snake and this snake, and I kind of just put together what I what I want to see babies out of, you know, kind of at random. I do keep it locality based at all times, uh, even as specific as a, a canyon, uh, you know. For example, I do have a locality of Clobberi that I keep. Um, the Palencios, and I have three localities from within that mountain range that I breed, and I will not interbreed them, but you know, within each other. So, right. I mean, if it's one thing I'm really like amazed about, only because obviously it's not just rattlesnakes that deal with these kind of uh, weather conditions, but these montane snakes, they're, they're in cold ass weather, bro. Like, I mean, not all the time, but it drops pretty cold where they're at. Am I right? It does. It does in, in most places uh, that they occur. Um, there are lep leps in particular. Uh, some of the places that they occur stay pretty hot in, in the so, summertime, especially. They do get nighttime drops, though. Um, and then, yeah, most of the New Mexico stuff, the nighttime lows are, are generally pretty low 60s. So do you have everything all in one room or is it separated by species? Like how are you running all the ambient heating for all that shit? Yeah, I have two different rooms. I have uh, my, my actual cold room where I keep my adult breeders uh, and snakes that are cycled. And then I have my baby room where I keep my baby stuff and the snakes that I'm kind of growing up to be breeders. Um, which, and this room, which I'm in now has also become my dwarf bitis room. Uh, I've got, I've got, what behind me here this is all dwarf vitis um yeah i, I got a bunch so and, and then it, are both rooms running the same temps for the most part or are they a little different um they're how, different how man the cold room is about it averages about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than this particular room here wow that's a big um, difference but they both have about a 20 degree fluctuation from day to nighttime ambient temperature Okay, and then how much is that has a has an effect on the breeding? I mean, you know, like there's certain techniques people do with chondros and whatnot, where they they, they drop the, the nighttime to like you know low 60s. I mean, do you do right. any of that? Right. Um, yeah. So it just kind of depends on the time of year to to know what to do, what temperatures to drop it to, and and for how long, and you know, then lighting comes into play, you know, light cycle has a large part to do with it, temperature drops, humidity changes, um, all that stuff comes into play, man, there's, there's a lot involved. And, you know, for the most part, you know, you're seasoned breeders, right, the girls that blade for you consistently, I mean, are they going year after year, you give them years off, like, how's that work? Um, just recently, I've actually experimented with uh, about four snakes, um, where I've bred them back to back years. Uh, in years past, I have not done that. I've always given them a year off. Uh, and they, what happens with these particular species is they breed in the fall, let's say August, uh, and then they don't have young until the following year in August, and in some cases September or October. So they have a, they have quite a long gestation um, period, um, and then I give them that entire next year off. So they go an entire year without having babies, and then the, the following season, um, I typically breed them again. So I'm still kind of experimenting with, uh, you know, is it detrimental to, to breed them back to back to back? You know, can, can you do it if they've been given the right nutritional uh, supplements? I don't know. 
You know, I'm, I'm still I, nobody has really done it, man, on this um, level for that long of a time. There are a couple people now who are, you know, beating a lot of this stuff as well. But we just haven't done it long enough, you know, to figure that out. Yeah. This is what's crazy, bro. Because like these are like literally, you're figuring this out yourself. You know what I mean? Like this is like yeah, hold on this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much for a lot of it. Now, for the most part, you know, you, just how you're talking about how you leave the 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 the, uh, the litter with the mom, right? Um, how does the mom react when it comes to you pulling the snakes? Does she, does she care? Is she defensive? Is she just like do your thing? Like how's that usually? I'm curious. I guess I guess you would call it defensive. Um, if anything, kind of just more curious and protective. Okay. Um, you know, some of the moms try to bite the tongs when you come in there with, to get the babies. Um, some of the moms, if you're not careful, can mistake you going in there for the babies for feeding time and will bite the babies. I've had that happen. So you kind of each female is a little different and you kind of have to approach them all differently uh, when you're getting their babies from them, you know, and that just kind of comes with knowing them over time. OK, um, you know, because I'm also curious, bro, because I mean, like I was saying earlier, a lot of people nowadays, like if you get into reptiles now, it's like you're motivated by either something on YouTube or somebody you met who's killing it. Um, right. But like there are still people getting into like pots you know there's people getting into venomous so i mean since you've been through a lot with these venomous uh let's talk about some like 101s you feel like that are very important for anyone who's new into the venomous world or like new into getting into venomous um i guess uh i don't that's a that's a that's a good one too man <laughs> that i really don't know how to answer um a lot of people kind of you know say that you should enter the the venomous hobby with a mentor some people say that you should start with a uh, copperhead some people say you should start you know with uh whatever it is that you want to keep kind of i just i really don't know that there's a right way man because i came into it you know completely blind i mean just literally completely blind to the hobby to what venomous snakes really were you know, uh, and I think I turned out, you know, decent. So I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what some baseline. <laughs> I guess just go after, figure out what it is that you really, really love and work with that because anything else really doesn't deserve to be with you, man. If you, if you don't love it, you shouldn't, you shouldn't work with it. And the reason why I ask you this, bro, because from what I see right now on social media, I'm terrified for the venomous community, bro. I don't like what I see. It's like, it's nah. not, what, it's not what we're seeing right here. You know what I mean? And this is why I don't have a lot of venomous keepers on my show because they influence the wrong thing, and I don't want right. that, bro. That's gonna be our biggest fucking downfall. Is motherfuckers getting popped, you know, by by cobras and shit, big big time stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it, 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 it absolutely will. It, it will be it will be the downfall. And that, again, that's one of the reasons why I said that I don't, you know, share when I get bid or what it does or anything like that, because I don't want that stuff in the media. I don't want that stuff portrayed to people, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> it, 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 they've all been stupid mistakes of my own. And I deal with them on my own. You know, the only thing that posting that kind of stuff online does is bring negative attention. That is all it does. But you said, but you still said that one word, attention, bro. That's the thing. It doesn't that matter. That is the thing. People, people will sacrifice good attention for negative attention because of fucking clout. There's a guy who just basically said, "Fuck all these legendary breeders. I don't care if you don't care if I. I don't care if I don't care if you get mad if I post live feeding videos and I document like the screaming and stuff. Like this is what this weirdo does, bro. And they're like, why are you posting live feedings? Like that's not the jam. Oh, but it gets me attention. I'm my my subscribers are going up, bro. Yeah. You're be shitting me. Like you just said, fuck all these legends who are respectfully telling you don't do that." And you yep. just did it anyway. So that, that shows you where we're at. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I think it just it does, man. It brings the wrong attention, you know. And I and I don't want that. I don't want people to see me or or not even really me because it's not about me, man. It's about the snakes, you know. Uh, even like the logo, the face of the logo, you know, is like about the snakes, man. About clubs. And I want people to see like the good in snakes and and what you can learn and what you can take from from keeping venomous the right way, you know. Um, or just, and, for, and, or just for the sake of the love for it, like like you're saying, right. like that, that you just love for ha just the, that it's in your presence. You know what I mean? Right, right, and and not and not for the likes, you know, on Instagram or 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 to impress uh, somebody. You know, that's those are the wrong reasons, man. And you know, I will say, you know, listen, I mean. I mean, you, you have to be in the right reason when keeping a species like this or something bad will happen in the in, in the worst way possible. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. And, and I don't know. That's that's why it's so hard to say, because no matter what we say, there's still that influence being out there. And there's going to be that person who has no idea who's going to come across a video and be like, oh, I could I could hold that snake like that. I mean, that's you know what I mean? That's the problem, man. That's you're exactly right. That is exactly the problem. And that's why I'm not. You know, uh, I'm not cool with it. I don't, I don't like that stuff. So let's 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 kind of dig dig deep about what your overall goal is, uh, Kyle, with with keeping venomous like this. Like, what what do you want at the end of the day with breeding such amazing venomous species like this? What do you what are you after? I got these good questions, huh? Yeah, man. I guess <laughs> it's just it's it's really just um, for me, man. Honestly, for, for me to learn about them, um, for me to figure them out, uh, and a lot of what keeping them in captivity does for me is it allows it, it, it helps me learn about them and allows me to find them and work with them better in the wild. So, right, that's and, and honestly, man, I don't know what I would do if I didn't keep snakes i don't even know what i would do i mean it's i mean that's why at the end of the day like you know i'm in a room of stuff that i could care less that breeds or not like i literally i'm in this room and this room is not a money room to me i mean it costs me money don't get me wrong but I don't right make, i don't make shit kind of profit probably won't for a long time in this room and i'm okay with that like because it's like you said this is like therapeutic to me bro i don't know what i would do without this shit and if it's one thing I respect from the homie Andrew so much is he, he as much as I love having what I have, he reminds me that it can all be gone tomorrow. Like all this shit, like, you know, like this thing is not guaranteed yeah. the next day. So, you know, just love what you have and just do your best by it. And, you know, this is why I just, you know, I don't know. I, I appreciate I have homies who've been in this game a lot longer than I have who instill like this, like don't take shit for granted type mentality. Like it's like anything. For sure, man. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I connect with you big time on this shit being on a therapeutic level. Um, uh, now I do want to talk about some, some, well, some people say this is a touchy subject, right? Because, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, bro. If my, if my wife was down for me handling venomous, I probably would still have that rattlesnake. I'm not gonna lie, but she, she, she pushed it, bro. Like two, about a year and a half of crying in the room saying, please get rid of it. That's, that's what I was dealing with. Right. Um, so either way I parted with it, but for you, right. You got a kid. You got how many, or you got two? How many kids you got? I actually have uh, one little girl. It's funny, she just walked in the room right now. Oh snap! How old is she? Yeah, she's right here, man. She's uh, eleven, going on twelve. Come here, baby. What's up? What's her name? Let's what's her, let's introduce her. Maya. Maya, what's up, Maya? Oh, what's up, Maya? How you living? Good. You like rattlesnakes? <laughs> They're cool. Yeah. Oh, damn. Future Herford. Hey, you got a pretty cool dad. I just got to tell you that, okay? So just so you know, your dad's really, really cool. You probably already know that, right? I did. <laughs> did you? That's a good girl right there, man. You're teaching her well. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Me too. Okay, I'll talk to you in a little bit, okay? I love you. So, okay, back to your okay, beautiful daughter, man. So she's 11 going I on. I appreciate it, bro. 11 going yeah. on 12. So she's, she's been around this whole journey for the most part of you. you her know, entire life. Right. So... I want even your mom or any family members. Did they press you like, "Hey, listen, you got a kid now. You should stop." Or like, like, let's kind of talk about what happened when that you know that, that kind of uh, moment in your life. Um, this will sound this will this one's gonna sound bad to a lot of people, man. But uh, I I was uh, we had my daughter, and at the time we lived in uh, separate 
houses, my, my wife and I, and, um, I, I went out and got a, a job in the oil fields and, you know, made some money and saved up to buy a house. And when it was time, my, my wife's parents, you know, kind of said, told her, Hey, you should not move into a house with this guy and all of his rattlesnakes. You know, at the time I had like 250, uh, rattlesnakes. Yeah. And, um, they, they didn't want her to do it. They did not want her to move in They did not want their granddaughter you know, my, Maya, my daughter to, to live in the house full of rattlesnakes. But, um, and she approached me with that and said, you know, my parents don't want me to do it. And I said, well, then I'm sorry, you know, you, you, then you can't move in, I guess. Cause my snakes are staying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, she accepted that. Uh, and, and I thank her to, for it to this day, man, cause she accepted it and um now it's grown into what it has dude and and I, i've got a i've got a collection that i'm happy with now dude and had it not been for that you know i mean it, it what a, what a rough decision to make but at the end of the day bro you know what's right in your heart i mean you i mean right it's kind of like this I'm, I'm gonna be real with you too i mean my wife you know she got me out of a real dark place like she met me when i was a fucking trying to i was trying to stop being a drug dealer but i was still a drug dealer i was like very right. back, I was very back and forth and very like, you know, not trying to be what I was about. So when I got into the snakes, she was kind of like, she was, she was like, do it. But then when times got tight or like, you know, I was stressed out, like she would kind of come at me like, Hey, maybe you should like get rid of some, or maybe you should do this. And I was like, like, I, I've I, been there. I looked at her like, listen, I understand I'm a piece of work, but don't ever tell me to get rid of my snakes. Like that, that's the most disrespectful thing you could ever tell me to do at this point because that's my foundation. That's what wakes me up in the morning are these animals. Yeah. Without this, I I would be selling drugs. I would be fucking – we probably wouldn't be together. Dead, dead ass tears. I would still be a, a big piece of shit on this earth if it wasn't for these animals. So that's why You're right. I, I get protective over it. Like, you know, I'm very like – you ain't fucking touching them. You know, they're like, they're like my children, you know, but, but it was also like, she had her best interest. So, but what I'm trying to say is, bro, this game, the animals in general, like, Hey, I, I don't know if you believe in a higher power. I believe in God. And I feel like God puts things in people's laps for a reason. And if you weren't really meant to be with these rep, with these venomous, they would have been out of your life a long time ago, bro. Like a hot one, for ago. Sure. but they're not like, and, and this is why you buckled down when that time came. And and look look at the legacy like and, and bro you're not even peaked yet dog like this is crazy like you're still at an age where you're still learning so much about yourself oh yeah dude what a trip bro because what you're 30 32 or how old are you 31 I'm 32 now yeah I'll be 33 in a couple months yeah we, we're still learning I'm 36 and I like I, I mean I do mature a little slow from age I feel like so but I'm just saying bro there's so much we're learning right now you know what I mean like and I'm loving yeah bro. I'm loving it bro but all I gotta say is um good for you to like know what i know what you know what was meant to be around your life it, obviously your daughter but you know that's your daughter's one half of you the other half is the snakes you know oh yeah right man yeah and i mean i truly think that they are my my calling if you will um like this is this is what was meant for me um excuse me for just one moment you're good hey, you're dude by all means please I love it. Guess hitting a dab. God, this is the time, man. Shout out to my boy. Uh, shout out to Ed. Hey, guys, while he's hitting the dab, can we get the likes up for my boy, Kyle, right now? This has been an amazing episode. We're not done yet, so please, let's get the likes up for my homie, Kyle Vargas. Shout out to the homie, uh, Jay, the barber in the building. Hella late, but what's cracking, fam and fellow trappers. Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. Shout out to my boy, Jay, the barber. Bar barber, Jay, the barber. But uh, epic shit, bro. Okay, so... That being said, as of right now, I mean, what, is your full time job keeping snakes and working with snakes? Or what, what, what is your your your, uh, your overall life grind right now? So I actually do a bunch of, right now. I just quit my my real real job about four months ago, and um, I am now doing like some work for people that I know. You know, doing fences and home remodeling and stuff like that. The snakes are kind of just like a little side thing, um, kind of a sell something here and there right now, especially, you know, it's not baby season or anything like that. So, right. uh, but I do spend a lot of time in the field and I do spend a lot of time in my rooms, you know, getting my snakes prepped up for this, this upcoming breeding season. 
Okay, and, and you, we didn't really kind of mention the season. How is the how is the season for your rattlesnakes? Like, what what is the time where they're off? When is the time where they're they're locked up doing things? Like, how's that work? So they kind of breed in late summer. Um, is when most of them breed. Uh, I do have some that breed in the in the spring, some vipers and stuff. But for the rat, most part, of the rattlesnakes breed July, August, and then the females. Uh, you know, over winter and then um, gestate through the spring months uh, into the summer months and have babies in late summer the following year. So off, off the top of your head, I mean, what, what what is your total breeding count? Like how many breeder females and males do you have that you could just round off of in your head? Uh, <laughs> man, I got a lot, man. Uh all right, all right, all right, hold on. Let's, let's make this easier. Let's make this easier. How many males are how many males are in rotation when it comes to your breeding? Like, are you using just one to one, or do you have males going to multiple females? Uh, just do one to one typically. Okay. So okay. there are times where I, where I have exceptions where I use one male for one, two females, or even three. But um, I guess I have probably around maybe sixty or seventy uh, adult. Females, okay. So right. you know, breeding breeding females, okay. And you know, as far as you, how you cycle animals out, right? Like obviously, you have a certain project one year. Like let's say you have one male that did its job. I mean, for the most part, is that male being replaced the next year for the for the most part, or or, or do you use no pairs? I usually just you know I use the same adults year after year after year. Uh, I do hold back some babies here and there. And I will throw in some holdbacks, you know, to my new breeding projects. But generally, I breed my my older animals together. I'm gonna show one snake. This snake, like, I don't know what it was. It was so. It was the prettiest snake that that uh, Des and Steven brought out during the venomous vlog I did. Um, yeah. But it is. It, it, it just gave me a bad feeling, like it could just really fuck you up. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you what. And, and I'm pretty sure this is a snake because it's also purple. Am I right? This thing right here. It's a, it's a tiny little snake. This thing's tiny. Yeah. Dude, okay. So it, isn't this thing purple too? Am I right? The sides are purple. Am I right? It kind of, yeah, it kind of has like some purple pink on the sides. Yep. Dude, this thing right here, man. Uh, I They're crazy. I can't tell you how amazing, how beautiful something like this is. Um, and, and not even the picture could do this thing justice. I'm telling you right now. It, it, They're it, real crazy, dude. Yeah. It hits you, it hits you in person. But <clears throat> this thing's really tiny, man. So... I mean, obviously, for the most part, these these come out pretty small. But are these right. ones, are these ones specifically smaller? Like, what's the smallest species of rattlesnake you're working with? I would say probably the twin spotted rattlesnakes uh, that I work with are the are the smallest. Um, the wow. adults that I have on average are about sixteen to eighteen inches. Uh, the babies come out, man, and I swear to you, they're they're like. You know, four, four in, three and a half, four inches sometimes. You know, they can't even swallow a whole pinky. Right. And, you know, we didn't really kind of talk about how you do go about the assist feeding part when it comes down. Because obviously there are times where you have to assist feed these, right? If it, if it comes down to it. Very, very rarely do I have to assist feed. But when I do, uh, I, I typically pin the animal uh, and then, you know, just – jam it jam it right down its throat um right. i found that assist feeding in the sense that most people do it where, where they put the head in the mouth and then kind of let the snake go and let it eat by itself um it doesn't really work with with my montane stuff they they, they spit it right back up so i gotta just you know shove it all the way down to the stomach and uh and then put them up but now, but that's like I said, that's very rare. They they typically, if they're not eating pinkies, they will eat lizards, which I provide. Oh, where's that sick ass? There's a sick ass photo. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was so sick. Where's it? I think I'm gonna go. There's the a, snake ambushing the lizard, or right yeah, this is so hard. Check this out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I'm, I don't know why seeing a dead lizard makes me sad because it's like they're asleep, you know. They're just, but you know, it's it is what it is. But this is fucking sick right here. Like this is like, man. And obviously, this yeah. is what you fed, right? This is or it, it ate this on its own, or how, what, what went down here? 
Yeah, yeah, that, that snake ate that lizard on its own. And um, so sometimes what I do is I'll cut the legs. This sounds ridiculous. Uh, they're, ob they're, they're obviously frozen thawed at, at this point, uh, uh, okay? But I'll cut the legs off, the front and the back legs off at the body um, just so that a snake that size, it was a really tiny snake, has an easier time swallowing it. Because sometimes if you leave the legs on, especially the back legs, uh, they have a very hard time getting the lizard down. So crazy. Um, and, and you know, I didn't ask you this either, but you know, what's your what's your approach when it comes to you looking at a baby and saying, oh, "Okay, I need to assist feed you." Like, when when do you go that route in, in in your in your world? So what I do is I use the babies that are feeding as a guide. Um, so. Like, let's say a, a litter mate to a, a snake that's not eating, I'll feed its sibling and it'll eat a pinky. I'll, I'll force feed its sibling a pinky. Well, when its sibling has digested and, you know, shit and is ready for another meal, I'll force feed the one that's not eating also. They're, you know, the same, the same scheduling as, as the one that's eating on its own. So they're all, that way they're on the same pace, basically, is what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. And, you know, I know you said that it's not frequent that you have to do this, but I mean, have you had it? How many that you have to assist feed actually make it? All right. Is it like, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, the, I guess the, the, the live, the, the live ratio or whatever. So I've, I've actually force fed animals. I think this, I think this is what you're asking. Um, I've force fed animals for up to two years, dude. Whoa. B before they eat on their own. Now. Wow. Now, now those are rare cases, uh, obviously, but but it has happened, dude. Dude, I, that's heavier than Socrates. My boy Sock, I had I had my my one last the last conjure I produced just never ate for me, and he's like, give it to me. He's like, send it to me. I got this. I'm like, all right. This fucking thing wouldn't even strike for me. So my homie gets it, and he shows me videos of the first day of it striking. But literally a whole year he goes and having to assist feed this thing, and then he finally gets it to wrap. And then it prolapses and dies. <laughs> After you know what I mean, so it's like holy shit. But like, yeah, I don't know. You you know who Ryan Young is? Have you heard of Ryan Young? I haven't. All right, so Ryan Young, one of the most, I mean, in my opinion, one of the highly most highly respected python breeders in the game. He's bred like over fucking twenty five species of pythons. But I had him on the show. Sure. I had him on the show, and you know, I, I kind of ask a lot of experienced breeders the question about how you approach assist feeding. And dude, he doesn't even he doesn't believe in assist feeding. Um, he feels like if they don't fuck it, if they're not meant to to take, they're not meant to be here. And and it is what it is. And and I mean, as brutal as it sounds, I mean, he basically wants to do it to not pass down that weak genetic. You know what I mean? And and all right, well, I didn't know if we could say stuff like that on here, but I also do that. Yeah, no, we well, bro, this is we keep it one hundred here, bro. We're, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, this is about. Yeah, I mean, if 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 they just don't want to eat, man, um, because because like I said, they they are lizard specialists, and uh, I'll go to the extreme sometimes of going to the actual mountain range where the parents are from and collecting a lizard to try with the babies that won't eat, and I feel the same way. If they do not eat something that they're offered that all of their siblings are eating. It's it's time to just let them, you know. Right. I mean, because it's it's if it's not going to be your headache, it's going to be someone else's headache if it's still alive. You know what I mean? And it's like I just don't know. And and and, and listen, as much as I'm trying to be ready for that, because bro, I got chondro eggs in the fucking got an incubator. I don't know what's about to happen, but I don't want to stress about assist feeding them. Like I don't. I almost nah. want to just. I almost want to just be able to like nut up the fact, and I feel good about being okay with it because I watched what my boy did for a whole year with that snake that I wanted to live. And it just wasn't meant to be a whole year. And finally yeah. the bitch fucking eats and then prolapse and dies. Like what the fuck? I, that, I feel like God's telling us something like, yo, st what are you doing? Like stop wasting your just time. Stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this means. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, man. Listen, I, I can't wait to see what happens with my condo clutch. And talk is cheap, bro. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get myself ready for this. But I do know, you know, I, I didn't enjoy having my boy, even though he, he did it for me and I appreciate it. But I didn't enjoy having my boy assist feed that snake for a whole year. I felt bad 
for not only him, but like that snake just it's probably being tortured in a way. I feel like it's just not meant to be here. Like it's just no. So you're right. You're you're absolutely right. Uh, like I said, I have had some extreme instances where I force fed snake for years. Um, right. But but now I'm I'm with I'm with your other buddy, man. Like I, I've run into situations where I force fed a snake, let's say for six months to a year, and then all of a sudden it starts eating. Well, then another year down the line, that snake is dead. You know, out of out of the blue, just out of the blue. Well, why is that? Did it have something to do with it not eating in the first place? Was it just not meant to thrive? You know, right? Maybe so. Maybe, maybe so. Right. So, so I agree, man. If if they will not, if they refuse to thrive, uh, then they cannot stay alive. <laughs> you know. And, and, and just, and I don't want to say that like there's been no healthy animal to come from assisting. That's not the case. There's there have been animals right. would be fine. You know, it's just. It's just like, do you want to pass that possibility to the next animal? Because from what I've heard, every animal that's had to been assist feed, their clutch was like had a lot of those. And from from what I've heard from other other experienced uh, chondro and uh, even emerald tree breeders. So um, I, I, I don't know. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm I'm very green at this. I don't know what I'll do when it comes to my chondro clutch. I mean, if it comes down to it, um, you know, one thing we didn't really talk about either, Kyle, uh, yet is. Uh, speaking of chondros and shit like that, one thing that the chondro community is not shy to talk about nowadays are things like nidovirus, like things that are wiping out people's collections and shit. You, you have to be worried about that at all with uh, what you keep, or or does that or does nido even happen to hit rattlesnakes from, from what you know? To be honest with you, I don't know about that particular uh, virus, but I do know that paramyxo virus has uh, touched people's collections. Uh, even people very close to me um, in, in, in the rattlesnake community. Um, but it's not really a big deal. You know, it's, I mean, it is, it is a big deal when you have it. But what, I guess what I'm trying to say is it, it doesn't seem like it's really a big issue uh, in, in the rattlesnake sector. You know, one collection every, you know, eight or ten years or something gets gets it or you hear about it, you know, it's not common at all. Right. I mean, but not, not that you, not that you're not like, Oh, it's like, I can't get it. I mean, it's just like, it's just not something that it's not frequent, especially you, because a lot of your shit's all been in house. Like a lot of your stuff's privately, like it's very rare or like, I, here's, here's another question. How often are you adding shit to your collection? Like how often are you like, buy, like, you know, putting new bloodline and shit into what you have? So I actually just added some, some fresh stuff to my collection uh, from some friends in Europe, um, some of which were just visiting me. Uh, they they just left a couple of days ago. Um, but I've also been to their homes uh, in Switzerland and Germany, and I've I've seen their collections. I've I've been in their homes. I know how they keep their animals. I know the quality of their animals, and that's why I've allowed them to to come into my collection. Um, and and they've also got snakes for me in the past, and I know that everything is is healthy. Um, I don't just buy a snake from a show table, you know, or or from some dealer in in Houston or Florida or something. You know, I don't I don't do those kinds of things. Right. Um, I, I I work with very very select animals uh, from very select places or people no and, and if it's one thing that i respect the homies uh that that uh, that that the way they're starting their venomous collection it's very selective like it's very like like there's a purpose behind every animal that they're getting right and do you feel like that should be everyone's i mean not to tell someone how they should do things but like let's say the person who's just getting into hots do you feel like that should be a huge interest too is like like the specific reason why you're working with that species and carrying on like a certain reason behind it or anything like that I think it has to be, man. Um, I think that it absolutely has to be um, because if if you don't if you don't keep something that you truly care about and are truly passionate about, then you're not going to keep it to the best of your ability. You know. Or, or yeah, I mean, and I feel like that's true too. But I mean. <clears throat> For instance, like, do, do you really tap in with your boys from Europe and see why they keep hots? Like, what's their purpose or, or kind of yeah. what their ideas are behind things? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and they kind of align with mine. You know what I mean? Um, and that, that's why I uh, associate with them and, and talk to them on a regular basis. Um, but I do. I ask people all the time, man, you know, like, what is it that you want to get out of out of keeping venomous or, or, or what is it that you do get out of it? Why are you keeping the stuff that you keep? You know, I really like to hear those answers from people. I'm interested in that. You know, I, I like to know what makes people tick and 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 why it does, man. It, it excites me, you know. Right. I mean, with that being said, <clears throat> what, what do you feel like, you know, because we haven't talked about your herping trips, right? Because herping trips is a big part of your life. Like what you do, like the scouting and shit, man. I mean, I, I saw a little behind the scenes of what was going on. And I cannot believe how sick that was. But how often are you planning these trips and, 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 and you know, how big of an influence do they have on your overall projects with, with what you work with? Um, they are a huge part of my collection. Um, you know, my, my, my understanding of the snakes, um, you know, I, my, I don't know. They're a huge part of it, man. Uh, I go out there to, to learn about the snakes, to see what they're doing in their natural habitat. You know, not so much to add to my collection anymore. Um, but the mountains just bring like a certain, um, I don't know. They bring a certain clarity to me, man. And, 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 it, and, and it's, it's, it, it really does something for me to be in the snake's habitat and feel the temperatures that they experience and the 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 winds and the sights and the smells man to 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 really be able to bring that home and and try to provide that to to them at home so i spend a lot of time in the field um observing and and learning as much as i can you know about them and, and then, like, what's a typical planning behind a herb trip, you know? Because, I mean, I've heard you, you stay out there sometimes, right? Or all the time? Or, like, how, how, how are you planning these? I'm just curious how you how you route these fucking these trips. Um, I, I try to do it around weather patterns, if at all possible. Um, timing of year is crucial as well. Um, but I kind of get with, with some friends, you know, and just we, we, we start talking about an idea or, or a place that we want to see a snake from um, or a place that we want to hike to and, and camp at, you know, cause a lot of times we will hike a few miles into a place and set up camp, you know, just with our backpacks, you know, um, but we'll start, you know, pitching ideas and then we'll say, all right, well, what about two weeks or, or, or three weeks? How does that sound? And we'll kind of just start, you know, putting days down, man. And then we go out and we, we get to, well, they usually drive to my house and from here we go to Walmart, get all our supplies, you know, our food and uh, <laughs> our snacks and, and our, our drinks and shit. And um, we head out to the mountains, man, and set up camp, set up tents and hammocks and chairs. And uh, we stay out there, dude. And we really, you know, we really do it, man. Like we, sometimes I go out there for five, six, seven days at a time. And just live out of a cooler, you know, and cook my food on the campfire. And yeah, man, Steve, Steven and uh, and Andrew got a little taste of that shit. I mean, yeah, they do. They can't stop talking about it. And I, you know, I think Stephen found himself or something like that, from what I heard, or there was something so crazy. Dude, that, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, that that's the reason why I want to kind of get people out, uh, you know, and and show them what it's about, because. Right. The snakes are awesome, man. They, they, they really are. And that's kind of why we're all linked up and, and why we've all met, you know, is because of the snakes. But there's more to it than just the snakes, you know. Right. It, it's, it's, about, it's about being out, out there with your homies, man, and, and having experiences, dude, and, and making yeah. memories. It all, it, all has, it all has a sense of healing, you know what I mean? It's all something to help complete something in your life, you know what I mean? And, oh, yeah. As much as I want to experience, I just – Bro, here's the thing, bro. Like, I, I'm so terrified of getting bit by something. And like, I, I mean, just because I've been, I've been in the worst situations. I have been bit by something you would never believe I got bit by. But like, I'm just like, you know, what are your state? Like, what are some safety things that you're always like, you, you make sure you stick by when you're going on these herping trips? I mean, none really. I, I don't. I don't. 
Yeah, man. Some, sometimes I go out there in like flip flops, you know. <laughs> yeah. You're so raw, bro. Unbelievable. This one said flip flops. I got pictures of me, dude, like uh, on on the slopes in flip flops with a uh, with a rattlesnake in my tongs. I'm seeing if I can find it right now, but yeah, man, I I uh, I don't really take any precautions, really. I just kind of I trust my footing. I I trust that my eyes are gonna, you know, see anything that might be my way. You know, right? I don't know. <laughs> You're nuts, bro. Uh, and and for the most part, you know, if you had anything bad happen on a herp trip, you know, they oh look at that, wow. Living life, yeah, man. Have you, have you had any kind of close calls on her trip? I mean, I know you said a lot of shit was in house that's happened to you, but like any homies or anything that's happened, or or because you know, a lot of here's one thing that like I wish I could be more. I mean, I can, but like you know, my uncle and uncles from the east coast are like are prone to just killing a rattlesnake, like they don't mind just killing it. And I'm like, yo, like, don't like you don't need to do that, like, please. Right don't do that you know but some just don't know better it's like the way of life or some shit you know what i mean like just kill it right and you know what i mean but i don't know where i was going with that um i was going somewhere with that what were we talking about before that what what's up dude you, you need another dab or what <laughs> yeah, probably I, it happens like once and once every episode I'll, I'll have like somewhere i'm trying to go with something it'll just go the other way but anyways listen i do have to say to wrap up on the herb herb topic um Anything like you've caught new species ever before? Like, if, is it common that you find something that that you can't really ID or like, yo, what the fuck is this? Like, how often is that happening? No, I've never found anything like that. Um, that is that has made me question an ID or anything. But I've found some animals that you know are completely aberrant or or unlike anything I I thought that I would see. You know, right. natural, but but still, you know completely different than what you would expect right okay that's what's up but never any like hybrids i've never found anything albino or nothing like that okay we'll check it out i have a uh, wrap-up question before we get into the hot seat questions okay kyle um what's up and, and and this is like you know i'm not trying to put your mind too deep into the future but i am curious on where you see this game going in like the next 10 to 15 years like or or what is your what is your end game with this do you even have an end game what's their overall future for club king so what i want to do man is get some property and have a place where i can set up my snakes uh in outdoor enclosures that hope hopefully in time people can walk you know the grounds and like be able to walk through different settings for, from from different mountain ranges uh, and and see the snakes that live in that habitat. Uh, and I want to have that, you know, like a little kind of a montane rattlesnake zoo in, in, in on a piece of property, and um, you know, kind of just have people be able to come there and see the snakes outside behaving naturally. You know, no matter what, no matter if, if, if it's a windy day, a sunny day, a rainy day, you're going to be able to go there and see how the snakes behave naturally, you know? Right. Fuck yeah. And, 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 and with that being said, like other than your own <clears throat> turf, like your home turf, like what's the plan for like doing any Mexico trips? I mean, because I, I, I do have something I want to say after this, um, but like do you have I do. Out of I do. I go down to Mexico uh, pretty often, man. I was down last year uh, several times. I have several trips planned this year. Actually, one very soon uh, for Mexico. But I go, I go down there often. All right, so check this out, bro. I'm, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but this is what I always do because it's my boy, and I don't care. But uh, my boy Miguel Garcia, right? <clears throat> always evolving pythons. I just had him on the episode, uh, or just had him on the show not too long ago, and he dropped some heavy news. And he has mad connections out in Mexico. Like he's doing big, crazy things, importations. Like he's he's opening up a lot of opportunities uh, for the U.S. and Mexico. But anyways, one thing that he basically is taking over is a venomous lab in in Veracruz. Um, 
I, I don't know if it's in Veracruz. I just know it's in the area. But basically, bro, I'm I'm about to roll over to this venomous lab and check shit out. And I'm trying to take Andrew. I'm trying to take Steven. And I'm trying to take you, dog. What is good? Let's roll. Yeah, sign me up. Put my name on the roster. <laughs> Let's do it. That's going to be the – and we're going to do a show there too with the, with the guy who owns it. So it's going to be the best shit ever. It's going to be epic. Yeah. Um, tell me when. I'm down. I'm in. Oh. Say less. Epic, bro. Listen, what an epic, what an amazing episode. I appreciate, you know, I'm sorry for the confusion, but we still nailed this shit. We still made it pop in. Uh, it yeah. was an amazing time. Um, I do have some hot seat questions for you um, before you dip out, if you're cool with these hot seat questions. Yeah, man, go. Shoot. All right, here we go. So hot seat questions for the homie Kyle Vargas. Um, do your best, bro, to just spit these answers out as quick as you can. I don't need, I don't need an explanation, okay? You ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Frozen thought or live? Live. Egg cut or no cut? Like, would you ever cut an egg or never cut an egg? Never cut an egg. Red chondro neo or yellow chondro neo? Definite red. Favorite rattlesnake species? Clover eye. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post. Yay imports or boo imports? It depends on the the. It depends, yes I guess, or, on yes or no. Yes or no. It's yay or it's either yes. If you had to make the call, you're the lawmaker. Yes or no? Yes. All right. One reptile you could import from anywhere today if you could anything. I do um, mixed coatlas from Mexico. One reptile nobody should ever import ever again. Like leave it alone. Fucking don't don't touch it. King cobras. I, I agree. Couldn't couldn't agree more. That and retic mainly retics. Um, all right. Yay sports or boo sports? Boo. All right. Big flexor or no flexor? No flexor. Steak or fish? Snake. Steak. No, steak. Steak or fish? Oh, fish. Fish all day. Okay. Favorite fish to eat? Grouper. Oh, nice. I haven't. I think I've had grouper once. My, I'm a huge halibut guy, but I, I, I feel like I want to try more grouper for sure. I love halibut. You're going to love grouper. Damn. Hella, hella. Okay. Yay alcohol or boo alcohol? Boo alcohol. Sober since January 25th. Oh, respect. Alcohol don't do it for me either. Like, I'll have some wine, but it just still, it still doesn't do it for me. I'd rather just be high as shit. You feel me? Um, Same. <laughs> Van Halen or Sammy Hagar? Hagar. ACDC or Metallica? Metallica. West Coast rapper, East Coast rap? East. Favorite East Coast rapper of all time? Sada, baby. Oh, dude, really? Damn, I yeah. like so you you fuck with the you fuck with the Detroit shit, bro. You fuck with like uh oh that, heavy. No, yeah, Sada Baby's from Texas though, right? Am I, am I wrong? I'm no, Sada Baby's Detroit. Detroit. Damn, we're about to we're about to talk some shit after this episode. That's sick. All right, um, yeah. little word association. First thing to come to mind: milk, snake, <laughs> substrate. Uh, natural. Cocoa. No, no. <laughs> Stuck shed. Bad keeper. Mites. Terrible keeper. FedEx shipping. Probably not safe. First time venomous keeper. Do what you love. If you had to get rid of one or the other and you're never bringing this back, you have to pick one. Is it going to be in and out Burger or Whataburger? In and out Burger's going bye bye for the rest oh, of the time. Oh shit! He said In and Out, bro. I feel you sometimes, bro. What a burger hits in a way that I can't get from In and Out, and I'm a huge In and Out guy, bro. So I can't believe you just dropped that. That's heavy. Yeah, no In and Outs for me, man. I'll be honest with you, In and Outs probably like on on from one to ten, um, it's probably like number eleven. Whoa, shit! Damn, you're going to piss off the whole of California right now. Bro. Yeah. Hey, you're keep Hey, bro, I'm not going to lie. I fucks with There's something about Texas when it comes to burgers, bro. I, I don't think we're there with them. We got Mexicans. 
We got Mexican food. You know we got Mexican food for sure. But I, I, I the, the whole fatty shit, you guys, Texas owns that one. Yeah. Hey, listen, bro. We had up to almost sixty people in the in the show at one point. All showing you love. What do you have to say to all your supporters out there? All the people tapping in to, to watch this episode, man. What do you got to say to everyone? Dude, I love it, man. Uh, I always love everybody that that uh, you know finds some to uh, take something from the the podcast that I do. I love you know sharing my passion and and what I do with anybody who's interested, man. And I'm always always open to talk um rattlesnakes uh snakes in general but uh for anybody that e has any questions ever on especially this stuff um feel free to always hit me up man um on the, on my instagram and um instagram's the best way to get a hold of you you would say yeah instagram i have snapchat too but i i i use that mainly for like close friends and family right instagram's the vibe all right well make sure yeah. you follow the homie kyle on instagram club king and again thank you so much what a great episode kyle um, I'll, be I'll be in touch with you, bro, but that's a wrap, man. Have a good night, cool, bro. brother. Kyle Vargas, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, brother. Have a good night, bro. Thank you, bro. You too, man. Hell yeah, that was so hard. Thank you to everyone who tapped in. I appreciate all the love and support. Um, again, if you happen to tap in later, don't forget to hit that like button for my boy Kyle. Uh, a lot of good information, man. I knew this was going to be a great episode. Definitely going to be a rewatch tonight. So, uh, yeah, appreciate all the love and support. I do have to say we have big things coming here to this show. Um, you know, I'm talking about to follow up after such an amazing podcast. Uh, we have somebody who's definitely heavy in the Hilo Derma game, uh, beaded, um, fucking Gila monsters. I mean, this guy right here, when it comes to those species, no one's on this guy's level, and I'm just being respectful at this point. But we are going to sit down Sunday, 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, my boy Steve Angeli Reptiles, okay? Um, this guy really inspired me in a lot of ways when it comes to working with these exasperatums. Um, and we're going to tap in, man. I'm telling you right now, first and foremost, go check out his stuff on Instagram. So you see what he's kind of working with. You can kind of see in the thumbnail, what kind of heat this guy has, but this guy is just, he breeds these things like it's fucking nothing. And this is not an easy species, uh, overall to, uh, to kind of get down. So anyways, we're going to tap in, uh, that's going to be Sunday. And then guys, I got to let you know, man, next Thursday, I'm doing something different. I'm finally coming out with a new series. I, I know we have new block, new breed on the block series. Uh, holy lizard sessions but i'm now doing something once a month i am bringing a good friend of mine to the show um we're going to collaborate we're going to talk about some things uh, we're going to just see how the whole month was um he's no stranger to a lot of you guys a lot of you guys fuck with this dude on a on a level when it comes to how you fuck with me uh but without further ado just be ready because next thursday night nobody is safe not a damn single one of you it's going to go down with my boy, Chris Eaton, Snakes and the Fat Man, collaborating with Trap Talk with MJ, going down next Thursday night. Holy shit. Who's ready for this? This is going to be fucking insane. Please drop a comment if you're ready for this. Uh, it's going to be heavy as fuck. But you guys can best believe that this is going to be a recurring segment every single month here on Trap Talk with MJ podcast. So hit that subscribe button, man. Let's go ahead and get excited for this because – me collaborating with somebody who's made a lot of fucking – he's made a lot of moves in here, man. And I'm talking about, like, one of the heaviest podcasters in the reptile game for sure. So he's coming down, collabing with me. It's about to be heavy. Don't fucking – just don't be – just don't sleep on this. That's all I got to say. And shout out to my boy Chris Eaton for wanting to collab and do this for me. Really means a lot. And shout out to everyone who reached out to me and is excited for this already. I did leak it out to my Patreon members. Shout out to my Patreon members, by the way. And shout out to uh, Royal Bama for joining the Patreon family. Thank you so much. You out there want to become more in depth? If you want to get behind the scenes, if you just want to be a part of a sick ass family who's down for their shit, go down to the link below. Click on the Trap Talk Patreon link and join the family today. Shout out to my Patreon members and shout out to all my viewers. Shout out to all you guys, okay? Even you, Bob Smith, weirdo motherfucker. Shout out to you because uh, you guys are watching. So, uh, but I'm out, man. Again, thank you to all you venomous guys. If you guys tapped in for the first time, I appreciate you so much because this guy right here definitely one of the sickest venomous keepers I've ever had to sp speak to. And uh, yeah, man, enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, and I'll see you guys Sunday. It's your boy, MJ, signing out. I'll see you next week. Cheek.